Okay, so I'm gonna be honest here. Yeah, good, good morning, afternoon, evening, all that crap. Don't care, do not care. I did not want to record a video this early. I wanted to maybe do a short. The problem is, is to do a short on this thing would do it a disservice. And honestly, flurry has been through enough. Seriously, I don't like having to talk about the Vegas Golden Knights. They are a privileged child that does not know how to handle responsibility for drafting and signing players. That is that, 100%. Every single off season, they have dropped somebody from their original roster emphatically, emphatically to make a, like almost make a wish kid, like dream purchase at the free agency. Oh, oh, we need to get better defensemen? Well, here's Alec Martinez. Oh, no, no, no. We need to get better, better defensemen. Got it. Let's just ship Nate Schmidt off, just wherever, somewhere in Canada, and take in, oh, Alex Pietrangelo. How about that? The top defenseman on the market. <laughs> How fortunate. Oh, we need offensive players? Great. Let's get Mark Stone. Good job. Good job. And you signed him. And, you know, until this team fails to win the Stanley Cup for the seventh time, I think his job security is pretty safe. And then you decide that you will sign Robin Leonard. Okay, I like Robin Leonard. That's fine. That makes sense. But then what do you do? You say, yep, we're going to run Leonard and Fleury. And everyone in the entire hockey universe just went, mm-hmm. Yep. Sure. That'll be a great idea. No, no, it was never a good idea. What you did was you effectively created a Vancouver 2011 scenario. They had Schneider and Luongo. There was one goalie you could not move because he was getting better than the other goalie, but the other goalie had so much tenure, it would feel like a slap in the face to move. What did Vancouver have to do there? When they didn't win the cup, they had to move Schneider, even though he probably was better than Longo at the time. Hindsight is 2020, and that was the right move, but it doesn't matter because you traded them both away in general. But what does Vegas do? Franchise goal. Franchise. Face of the team. They trade him away. But what's the return? Fucking nothing. Nothing. I'm not even, nothing. Not future, they're not even, they're not even, I think it's maybe one prospect in like some league in Europe who just probably finding out that he got traded the same way that Mark is by checking online and seeing his name in one of, like every third time they announce what the trade is, they include that kid. For two thirds of the time, they don't even say it's him. They just say, Flurry traded to Chicago for nothing. Like, what a slap in the face. We were all getting mad at Flurry's agent for apparently starting, like, starting crap, starting shit, because he posts a photo of Flurry with, with a sword in the back. Man, man, did that not age well. This guy literally played for the first two rounds of the playoffs, stellarly, he won the goddamn Vezina Trophy. And all because he could not handle the puck in game three. He is no longer there. Despite having the, like being top five practically in wins for a goalie in playoffs. With three Stanley Cups to his name. I am utterly, utterly unimpressed with Vegas. And for the people trying to justify this trade, think about what a type of entitlement that is being thrown around. Well, you, ha you have to understand, we were just using this to, as a salary dump so that we could, we could trade for Jack Eichel. Fuck you! You do not deserve Jack Eichel! If you have a team that high caliber, you do not need the number one guy on the market. That by, if, if you're so close, you don't need that. And if you don't think you're that close, go look at yourself in the mirror. Two straight third round appearances. You have never missed the playoffs. Right now, there are people practically self-emulating in Buffalo because 
They cannot do anything right. And you have been handed everything to do everything right. This team does not care about longevity. This team has an owner who is obsessed with winning a Stanley Cup and thinks that every year he has to constantly upgrade his team to do so. When in actuality, he really doesn't. It is not necessarily about the big names here. And if you're having buyer's remorse, here's a thought. Don't sign them that giant contract then. Maybe be a little more strategic. Because the fact that Fleury, who is probably one of the greatest goaltenders this side of the millennium, is now being forced to retire after winning the goddamn Vezina because a team did not care about his wishes until him finding out afterwards online, he still hasn't been contacted as of now, that he has been traded, is disgusting. This is worse than hearing about how Martin Brodeur played for the, for the Blues, even on his own accord. This is worse than seeing Mika Kiprasov get burned out in Calgary because they just could not find anyone to help balance the minutes. This is worse than watching Luongo rot on the final years as the Panthers. Fleury was not a dead dog. He won the Vesna. He was one of the key contributors as to why you made the playoffs and why you were succeeding in the playoffs. Did he struggle against Montreal? Yes, that happens. Also, but you know what also happens? Your team didn't perform in any way. And that's not because you don't have the talent. It's just because they, 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 they blew it. And that doesn't mean you need to overhaul the, the, like the forwards. It just means it wasn't your time to win. Tough crap. Only This is types of moves that only Vegas can get away with and other huge markets like this. Winnipeg could not pull this shit. Buffalo could not pull this shit. Hell, even Toronto could arguably not pull this shit. Because it is so hard for, to get free agents to sign in certain locations... Then to trade certain ones off, trade certain players off just so willingly for nothing and then just throw yourself at the cap ceiling and say, oh, here we go again. It's ridiculous. Honestly, when this team crashes, they will crash hard. They also traded away their first ever pick, ever pick in franchise history for Nolan Patrick. Now, I like Nolan Patrick, Manitoba boy. But that guy is injury prone as hell. And they traded away Cody Glass for it. What the hell? Like, what the actual hell? Honestly, bottom line is, I, this is why I get excited every time I see Vegas blow it. Each year. Because they're buying their way into this every single time. And every single time, it just feels wrong. Comment down below your thoughts on this trade, guys. You might disagree with me. That's fine. That's totally fine. Um, yeah, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And uh, yeah, we usually have higher production value than this. But then again, everything decided to happen on the one week of our freaking vacation. My name, my name is Zach Reno and Cardinal and is diagonally towards the camera. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.